So a lot of the claims that came out of the presidential debate, especially from the Trump side, shouldn't be taken lying down, which is why I'm going to get up. That um, someone who was former president would cite Viktor Orban, one of the most despised leaders uh, in this part of Europe, as a reference uh, for credibility for being a strongman. That someone would claim that even before uh, taking inauguration, their pledge of office, that they settle the Ukraine war, and it looks like it wouldn't be done in Ukraine's favor. That the war would have never have started, the war between Russia and Ukraine, if Mr. Trump was in office. So the other thing uh, that came out of this debate, and I'm not trying to be one-sided here, is putting doubt into people's minds, minds about the uh, integrity of the U.S. election system about the integrity of the justice and law enforcement system. What does that say about the U.S. as a world power and foreign capitals around the world, including here in Ukraine, which relies very much on U.S. support? Now, on the other hand, uh, so I'm talking about Mr. Trump. On the other hand, uh, Vice President Harris uh, performed very well. She projected, um, you know, someone who really supports uh, unity, uh, allies, partnerships, that sort of thing. But we have to admit as well that um, the U.S. did really drag its feet in terms of providing Ukraine, where I am right now, with what it needs to push back Russia. And maybe, just maybe, by the end of the week, because of rapid moving developments, um, the U.K. and U.S. Uh, foreign ministers are here today. Uh, the U.K. Prime Minister will be in uh, Washington on Friday. Uh, maybe we'll finally see the U.S. give the okay, at least for British Storm Shadow missiles, which use U.S. technology to be used inside Russia, or maybe they'll surprise us and um, allow U.S. attack uh, missiles and other weapons to be used to launch strikes against launch pads in Russia that are being used to send rockets right here where I am in Odessa and elsewhere in Ukraine. Anyway, here's um, a couple of clips that I thought you should see from the debate. I watched the whole thing this morning and sat riveted. Um, but I'll, I'll let you make up your own minds in terms of who's making sense, who's making good points, and uh, who can we trust. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. But we cannot afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as Vice President of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way, in a presidential debate, and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election. It leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. I'll give you one minute to respond, Mr. President. Let me just tell you about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man, he's a, he's a tough person, smart, prime minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. They were afraid of him. China was afraid, and I don't like to use the word afraid, but I'm just quoting him. China was afraid of him. North Korea was afraid of him. Look at what's going on with North Korea, by the way. He said Russia was afraid of him. I ended the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, and Biden put it back on day one, but he ended the XL pipeline. The XL pipeline in our country, he ended that, but he let the Russians build a pipeline going all over Europe and heading into Germany, the biggest pipeline in the world. Look, Viktor Orban said it. He said the most respected, most feared person is Donald Trump. We had no problems when Trump was president. But when this weak, pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago, that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. 
He got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand her. But he got 14 million votes. They threw him out. She got zero votes. And when she ran, she was the first one to leave because she failed. And now she's running. I don't understand it, but I'm okay with it because your time is up. I think we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get tonight. We're going to continue here. And I want to turn to the war in Ukraine. We're now two and a half years uh, into this conflict. Mr. President, it has been the position of the Biden administration that we must defend Ukraine from Russia, from Vladimir Putin, to defend their sovereignty, their democracy, that it's in America's best interest to do so, arguing that if Putin wins, he may be emboldened to move even further into other countries. You have said you would solve this war in 24 hours. You said so just before the break tonight. How exactly would you do that? And I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. I want to save lives that are being uselessly, people being killed by the millions. It's the millions. It's so much worse than the numbers that you're getting, which are fake numbers. Look, we're in for $250 billion or more because they don't ask Europe, which is a much bigger beneficiary to getting this thing done than we are. They're in for $150 billion less because Biden and you don't have the courage to ask Europe like I did with NATO. They paid billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars when I said, either you pay up or we're not going to protect you anymore. So that's maybe one of the reasons they don't like me as much as they like weak people. But you take a look at what's happening. We're in for 250 to 275 billion. They're into 100 to 150. They should be forced to equalize. With that being said, I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well, and I know Putin very well. I have a good relationship, and they respect your president, okay? They respect me. They don't respect Biden. How would you respect him? Why? For what reason? He hasn't even made a phone call in two years to Putin. Hasn't spoken to anybody. They don't even try and get it. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, and what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together, that war would have never happened. And in fact, when I saw Putin after I left, unfortunately left because our, our country has gone to hell. But after I left, when I saw him building up soldiers, he did it after I left. I said, oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a good, strong point of negotiation. Well, it wasn't, because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead, and it's only getting worse, and it could lead to World War III. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War III, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's — where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify they here — They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? But we have a president, Mr. president that doesn't know he's alive. Your time is up. It would, just to clarify in the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f just get it done. All right. Negotiate a deal, because we have to stop all of these human lives from being destroyed. I want to take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as commander in chief, if elected, how would you deal with Vladimir Putin? And would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. I believe the reason that Donald Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. And that's not who we are as Americans. Let's understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded tried through force to change territorial boundaries to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I met with President Zelensky. I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense. And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now.
and understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done to preserve the ability of Zelensky and the Ukrainians to fight for their independence. Otherwise, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv with his eyes on the rest of Europe, starting with Poland. And why don't you tell the 800,000 Polish Americans right here in Pennsylvania how quickly you would give up for the sake of favor and what you think is a friendship with what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. Vice President Harris, thank you. We've heard from both of you on Ukraine tonight. She Afghanistan came up in the last hour. I, I wanted her to respond to something you said earlier. And I'll, I please, I'll, I'll give you a minute here. Putin would be sitting in Moscow, and he wouldn't have lost 300,000 men and women, but he would have been sitting in Moscow. Quiet, please. He would have been sitting in Moscow much happier than he is right now. But eventually, you know, he's got a thing that other people don't have. He's got nuclear weapons. They don't ever talk about that. He's got nuclear weapons. Nobody ever thinks about that. And eventually, uh, maybe he'll use them, and maybe he hasn't been that threatening. But he does have that, something we don't even like to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about it. But just so you understand, they sent her to negotiate peace before this war started. Three days later, he went in and he started the war because everything they said was weak and stupid. They said the wrong things. That war should have never started. She was the emissary. They sent her in to negotiate with Zelensky and Putin, and she did. And the war started three days later. And that's the kind of talent we have with her. She's worse than Biden. In my opinion, I think he's the worst president in the history of our country. She goes down as the worst vice president in the history of our country. But let me tell you something. She is a horrible negotiator. They sent her in to negotiate. As soon as they left, Putin did the invasion. President Trump, thank you. You did bring up something. You said she went to negotiate with Vladimir Putin. Vice President Harris, have you ever met Vladimir Putin? Can you clarify tonight? Yet again, I said it at the beginning of this debate, you're going to hear a bunch of lies coming from this fellow. And that is another one. When I went to meet with President Zelensky, I've now met with him over five times. The reality is it has been about standing as America always should, as a leader upholding international new rules and norms, as a leader who shows strength, understanding that the alliances we have around the world are dependent on our ability to look out for our friends and not favor our enemies because you adore strongmen instead of caring about democracy. And that is very much what is at stake here. The President of the United States is commander in chief and the American people have a right to rely on a president who understands the significance of America's role and responsibility in terms of ensuring that there is stability and ensuring we stand up for our principles and not sell them for the, for the benefit of personal flattery. The other thing that became clear is that um, kind of reminded me of the last uh, presidential election here is where the incumbent, Poroshenko, just ignored the pocketbook issues, including the price of food that was um, really going up at the time. The same thing in this debate, where Kamala Harris concentrated on a lot of issues regarding food prices and pocketbook issues and things like that. But Donald Trump just ignored that and came across as a bitter old man who couldn't really give much of a hoot about uh, the situation of the ordinary American. So I think that will really come back to haunt him. Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, here are the world headlines curated by me from news sites that I visit and from newsletters that I get. Have a great one.